Ibn Mas'ud reported, we went to the Messenger of Allah and he came out with good news and happiness was easily recognizable upon his face. When we asked him about a matter, he would tell us about it and we were never silent about anything until he spoke of it. Until a party from the Bani Hashim passed by, amongst whom were Al Hassan and Al Hussein, peace be upon them. When he saw them, he hugged them with tears in his eyes. So he asked, O Messenger of Allah, we see something has changed in your face which distresses us. Thereupon he replied, We are a family of a house for whom Allah has chosen the hereafter rather than the present. After me, my family will be refugees, driven out of countries until the black banners are raised in the east. They will ask for the truth, but they will not be given it. So they will ask again for it, and they will not be given it. So they will fight and be given victory. Those of you or your descendants who lived during that time, go to the Imam of the family of my house. Even if you have to crawl over ice to him, indeed, they are banners of guidance. They will deliver it to a man from the family of my house. His name is the same as my name, and the name of his father is the same as my father, and he will fill the ground with fairness and justice. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, If only one day of this world remained, Allah would raise up a man from my family who would fill this earth with justice, as it has been filled with oppression. For centuries, the Ummah has been in search for the Mahdi due to his significance in his role to restore the glory of the Muslim community, which has been drowned in shame, humiliation, and defeat after defeat after defeat. Whether it was the Abbasids, with the raising of their black standards, inspired by the hadiths regarding the black banners rising from Khorasan or the Fatimids, the Shia Caliphate, which sought to prove their legitimacy through the claim of their lineage tracing back to Fatima, may Allah be pleased with her, the daughter of our beloved Prophet. Many past dynasties and caliphates aspired to have the Mahdi amongst their ranks. Unfortunately, this aspiration extended to even individuals whom, perhaps out of ambition or fame, falsely claimed themselves to be Imam Mahdi. These claims included Muhammad Ahmed, the leader and founder of the Mahdist revolt in Sudan against the Anglo-Egyptian occupation of his country, or Mirza Ghulam Ahmed, founder of the Ahmadiyya movement, who later on upgraded his status to that of the promised Messiah anointed by Allah himself or even worse, the man who held the Kaaba hostage and forced the pilgrims to pledge allegiance to him with guns pointed to their heads, Juhayman al -Otaibi. For these reasons, the topic or even the idea to try to identify who the Mahdi is has become extremely controversial. And so, in our aim to find who the Mahdi is, we will only use reliable and authentic hadiths that are at least Hassan or Sahi in grade, in order to avoid any sort of ambiguity. So what are the prerequisites or necessary conditions for one to fit the role of the Mahdi? Firstly, the Mahdi will be a Hashemite, descendant of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, as the following hadith states. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, the Mahdi will be of my family, of the descendants of Fatima. One thing to note here, is that the Hadith states the lineage of the Mahdi and not his ethnicity or nationality. Keep it in mind for the remainder of the video. The Mahdi will also carry the name similar to that of Prophet Muhammad. The world will not pass away until the Arabs are ruled by a man from my household whose name agrees with my name. The Arabic term used to describe the Mahdi's name similarity to the Prophet could be defined as agreeing with or equivalent to, but not identical to. Therefore, the name of the Mahdi is not necessarily Muhammad ibn Abdullah. It could be Muhammad ibn Abdul Rahman, Abdul Aziz, Abdul Karim, and so on. Lastly, when it comes to the Mahdi's physical features, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, The Mahdi will be of my stock, 
and will have a broad forehead, a prominent nose. He will fill the earth with equity and justice, as it was filled with oppression and tyranny, and he will rule for seven years. A prominent nose is a nose which is generally larger than the average nose, particularly regarding the height of its nasal bridge. Therefore, he will have a large nose or nasal bridge and a broad or large forehead. There are many other hadiths regarding the Mahdi's actions and achievements, which I have purposely postponed later in the video, which will be clear later on. Now let's recap some of the conditions we've established based on clear hadiths. The Mahdi will be a descendant of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, through Fatima, may Allah be pleased with her. He will have a similar name to that of the Prophet and will have a prominent nose and a broad forehead. Any person who falls short of just one of these conditions is therefore illegitimate to fit the role of the Mahdi. So, who may that person be? Where is he? And what is he currently doing? Today I am with Muhammad Qasim. Muhammad Qasim ibn Abdul Karim is a man from Lahore, Pakistan. Currently residing in his home city, since 2014, he has been sharing his dreams from Allah regarding shirk, the end of times, Dajjal, Gog, and Magog, the descent of Isa, peace be upon him, and the re-establishment of the caliphate. He claims that the sharing of his dreams is a commandment by both Allah and his messenger Muhammad. He started off by informing his family and relatives in 2014 of his dreams, and later on publicized his dreams on social media platforms, on interviews, and is gradually gaining both traction and followers. The purpose of his dreams, as he claims, is to help the Ummah to eliminate shirk, an unforgivable sin in Islam, and for the Ummah to prepare for the trials to come. Now, people, now that you're having these dreams and they're coming to fruition, people are starting to make claims that you're the Mahdi. No, I am not claiming anything. I am just a simple Ummati of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the last messenger of Allah. And you will never ever hear any big uh, words from my mouth. And uh, when I started to share my dreams, uh, people uh, messaged me that you are creating those dreams that and pretending that you are that person. And uh, then I see the dream that Allah told me to upload this, uh, make a video and upload this. And in the video, I clearly mentioned that I am not lying about my dreams and uh, those dreams are from Allah. And uh, I am not asking any reward from other people. And Lanatullah uh, al uh, and may the curse of Allah be upon the liars. Muhammad Qasim is the Mahdi. This video is not sponsored by any individual, nor does it seek to create a cult of personality or deviate from the folds of Islam, as you will soon see that this claim I make is purely based on reliable hadiths which I have provided before. But be patient. The Messenger, peace be upon him, said, he who saw me in dream in fact saw the truth. Sahih Muslim, the Book of Dreams, narrated on us. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Whoever has seen me in a dream, then no doubt he has seen me, for Satan cannot imitate my shape. Sahih al-Bukhari, in the interpretation of dreams. Both of these two Sahih hadiths claim that not only is it possible to see the Messenger of Allah in one's dreams, but that it is in fact truly him, as no jinn or devil can imitate his appearance in one's subconscious. Well, what about the fact that Muhammad Qasem blatantly claims to have seen and spoke with Allah in his dreams? How could one possibly justify this claim? Well, this claim in fact does not conflict with either the Quran or the Hadiths. As narrated Abu Kilaba from Ibn Abbas that the Messenger of Allah said, During the night my Lord, blessed is He, and Most High came to me in the best of appearances. He, one of the narrators, said, O Muhammad, do you know in what the most exalted group busy themselves with? He said, No. He then said, So he, Allah, placed his hand between my shoulders until I sensed its coolness between my breasts. Regarding this hadith, 
Many reliable scholars have commented on the Prophet seeing Allah in his dream. For instance, Imam al-Nawawi argues that seeing Allah, the Almighty in a dream, is possible. An nawawi may Allah have mercy upon him, said when explaining the book of Imam Muslim that al-Qadi Iyad said, The scholars have agreed that it is possible to see Allah the Almighty in a dream, and that the dream would be true. Qadi Iyad, who al nawawi was referring to, was a leading polymath and scholar in hadiths, of which his doctrine has inspired the likes of Ibn Taymiyyah. Speaking of Ibn Taymiyyah, he himself has commented on the issue of seeing Allah in one's dream. Ibn Taymiyyah and others said that it is possible for a person to see his Lord in a dream, but what they see is not how he really is, because there is nothing like unto Allah. Allah says, He is the originator of the heavens and the earth. He has made for you spouses from among yourselves, and made mates for cattle as well, multiplying you both. There is nothing like him, for he alone is the all-hearing, all-seeing. And in Surat the Elevation, when Allah spoke to Moses, peace be upon him. When Moses came at the appointed time and his Lord spoke to him, he asked, My Lord, reveal yourself to me so I may see you. Allah answered, You cannot see me, but look at the mountain. If it remains firm in its place, only then will you see me. When his Lord appeared to the mountain, he leveled it to dust and Moses collapsed unconscious. When he recovered, he cried, Glory be to you, I turn to you in repentance, and I am the first of the believers. These others that Ibn Taymiyyah referred to included the likes of Imam al-Baghawi, Taqi ad-Din, and even Imam al-Ghazali. So, which one of us is going to refute the arguments of these prominent scholars? And again, I want to highlight that it is possible to see Allah in one's dream, but not in his true form. Rather, it could be a light, or it could be the word Allah appearing in your dream. As Allah says, It is not possible for a human being to have Allah communicate with them, except through inspiration, or from behind a veil, or by sending a messenger to reveal whatever he wills by his permission. He is surely most high, all wise. So now that we've concluded the possibility of seeing and speaking to both Allah and his messenger in one's dream, Let's compare some of Qasem's dreams to the Hadiths to evaluate the credibility of this man's dreams. In one of his dreams, Qasem says, I saw a dream on April 10th, 2015. The last Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, addressed me and he said to me, My son Qasem, just before the day of judgment, four major signs will appear. Then he said to me, The first major sign is the appearance of you, my son, Qasem. I was shocked by the news and I saw myself consulting a religious scholar to confirm about the first sign of the Day of Judgment. The scholar asked me, Are you related to Prophet Muhammad? I told him, He is my father and people used to call him by the name Abul Qasem. <laughs> يظن أنه يقصده قالوا وذلك أنه وقعت قصة أنه كان رجل يقول يا أبا القاسم يا أبا القاسم فالتفت إليه النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يظن أحد ينادي فالتفت إليه قال لا 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 أعنيك يا رسول الله أعني فلانا فقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم تسموا باسمه لا تكنوا بكنيتي أبو القاسم أنا بغى This dream is in accordance with the conditions we've agreed upon early on, that the Mahdi must be a descendant of Muhammad, peace be upon him. If we look to the seerah of the Prophet, he was indeed referred to as Abul Qasim, as Abu Huraira reported that Abul Qasim, peace be upon him, said, Give name to your children after my name, but do not give the kunya of Abul Qasim after my kunya. Reference, Sahih Muslim, The Book of Manners and Etiquette. Another hadith states, a man amongst us begot a boy whom he named Al-Qasem. On that the Ansar said to the man, We will never call you Abu Al-Qasem, and will never please you with this blessed title. So he went to the Prophet and said, O Allah's Messenger, I have begotten a boy whom I named Al-Qasem. And the Ansar said, We will never call you Abu Al-Qasem, nor will we please you with this title. The Prophet said, The Ansar have done well, name by my name, but do not name by my kunya, for I am Qasem. 
Reference, Sahih al-Bukhari. Not only does this prove that, indeed, the Prophet Muhammad was referred as Abul Qasem, but he also forbade the usage of his kunya. Furthermore, Muhammad Qasem narrates that, Allah told me in many dreams, Qasem, one day I will help you and will give you success, and I will fulfill all my promises even if there is one day left from the day of judgment, and the whole world will see your success. This dream from Muhammad Qasem is in line with the following hadith. Narrated Ali, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, If only one day of this world remained, Allah would raise up a man from my family who would fill this earth with justice as it has been filled with oppression. Sahih al-Albani, Sunan Abi Dawood. If you're still not satisfied, then here is another dream which is in line with the hadiths regarding Imam Mahdi. Qasem narrates, I saw in this dream that how I was distributing food to other people. I finished distributing food to everyone, and they had enough food to fill themselves. When I saw how much food I had left, there was a lot remaining. Then the last prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, told me, Qasem, distribute more food. I looked around and everyone looked satisfied and filled. Then I started distributing more food, and people looked at me in shock. They were telling me, Qasem, we are satisfied and our stomachs are filled. I continued distributing and I saw how I still had food left. Then I started thinking whether I should keep the rest to myself or not. Then I thought about something that made me feel bad. I thought that what if the last prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, appears in someone else's dreams, saying to him that, go and tell Qasem, that the last Prophet Muhammad said to distribute more food. I don't ever want the time to come where the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, starts messaging others just to convince me. This would definitely make me feel really bad. So I started distributing more food until in the end, people would refuse. And the dream ends there. So is there any reliable hadith that attributes the Mahdi with the role of a distributor? There is in fact, as Abu Sa'id and reported that Allah's messenger said, there would be in the last phase of the time a caliph who would distribute wealth but would not count. Reference, Sahih Muslim, the book of tribulations and portents of the last hour. And here is another hadith. The messenger of Allah, peace and blessings be upon him, said, the Mahdi will appear in the latter part of my nation. Allah will grant him rain to bring produce from the earth. He will give out wealth appropriately, cattle will be plentiful, and the nation will become great. He will live as ruler for seven or eight years. This hadith also correlates with another dream of Qasem regarding the time of peace. Muhammad Qasem saw this dream on the 31st of August, 2022. He says, In this dream, I am amongst some people who are listening to me and asking questions about my dreams. They ask me how much time is left before the Day of Judgment. I say to them, when the wars begin, which will all be part of World War III and the conquest of India, then after these wars, there will come a time of peace. The wars will last for about four years, and the era of peace after this will be seven years. And thus, we have proved the legitimacy of Qasem's dreams in accordance with reliable Hadith sources along with the possibility of one being spoken to by both Allah and His Messenger, and Allah knows best. Whether you choose to believe or disbelieve, nor Qasem or anyone else will benefit from this matter. I or any other helper or Qasem do not ask for your financial or any sort of materialistic support. We merely ask for the audience to abstain from the greatest sin possible in Islam, which is shirk. And I testify that the purpose of the video is not to promote a cult of personality, to deceive any person, nor to spread any branch of Islam other than that of Prophet Muhammad. There is no God but Allah, and Muhammad is his last messenger. Many of his dreams have come true, and many others are in the brink of occurring. And Qasem, as we're speaking, is beginning to reach large Pakistani media outlets. There are many other proofs from the hadiths which validate his dreams are true. For more information, visit these channels.